Here we have two September sessions on my local patch. I don't fish here very often since the days when there were plenty of flatfish are well and truly over. However, you can still pick up the odd one in amongst other fish. I'm setting up two rods, but it's unlikely that I'll be using both of them at the same time. The first is a Technos VT 15 foot rod with a sensitive tip. This is strong enough for the tidal run and would be used for fishing at distance. The reel is a Pen Affinity 7000 with 20 pound braid. I don't need much gear here, so I've replaced my rucksack with a small bag containing two reels, enough rigs for the day on winders and my bait. This is a medium sized tide and I'm just fishing an hour and a half either side of high water. It's very shallow and you're fishing over mud flats so I like to keep my rods down low. The second rod I'm setting up is another Gravel Technos but this time it's the estuary rod with interchangeable tips. This is matched up with a Daiwa Mcast Evo 5000 reel, again with braid. The stretch I'm fishing is on the Thames Estuary at the eastern end of South End. It's between Fort Bay and Shoebury Ness and is referred to as Shoebury Common although locals like to refer to it as Uncle Tom's Cabin. There's a pay and display car park with plenty of space, but as the Google Earth image shows, it can get pretty busy in the summer. For those that like precise locations, I'm fishing in front of Beach Hut 472. I'll start with the estuary rod, so I have attached a free hook flapper rig with an elongated watch lead. This is for fishing at close to medium range. The bait I'm using is ragworm left over from a previous trip. The fish aren't very fussy here and will take partly rotting bait. Often they'll actually prefer this to fresh and lively ragworm. I've started with a rig with size 2 hooks and long flowing snoods, but I will vary this. If I'm not getting any bites, I might scale down to smaller hooks and hook lengths of over 3 or 4 foot. But if I'm getting plenty of bites and missing them, I might go completely the other way and go for short hook lengths with much bigger hooks up to a 1.0 or even bigger. I've also got some leftover black lug and I will try this uh, much further out on the longer rod but um, I'm not really confident I'm going to catch on it. Today I've made my usual mistake of misjudging the speed at which the tide is coming in, so I'm having to make an early move a little bit further up the beach. No indications on the short line, so I'm now casting to the boats. Wading helps, and the extra length of a VT rod aids casting a long free hook flapper some distance.
It's now three quarters of an hour before the top of the tide, and unusually I haven't had any indications. I'm expecting bites on high water, and this should be my last move up the beach. And typically, there's a fish on when you're not there to see the bite. It's schooly bass of this size that you're generally expecting to catch here. I'm using a 5 ounce breakaway flat lead for fishing at distance. For closer in, I tend to use 2 to 3 ounce watch type leads. With the onshore breeze, I'm a little bit too close to the strand line, so I have to make a slight adjustment. And I'm not overly concerned with a windsurfer getting ready behind me. He did come and have a chat with me earlier, noted where I was casting and did say that he would keep well out of the way of where I'm fishing. That's one thing I like about Southend, is that other beach users are generally very friendly and very accommodating. I'm now getting bites and looking at different ways in which I can actually hit them. The windsurfer is now on his way and true to his word, didn't interfere with any of my fishing. When they arrive, the scoldy bass normally arrive in numbers and it can be a bite of chuck. I catch a couple more, but then I go through a succession of missed bites. Fishing here can be very frustrating at times. My approach here to hitting more scoolie bites is to swap over to larger hooks and larger size baits. The scoolies snatch at the bait and run, so you need fairly long hook lengths of over two foot at least. At times, they'll take a big portion of ragworm on a 1-0 or even a 2-0 and it's then that you're more likely to hit bites. A bigger hook is harder to eject so you get more hookups. Well that's the theory anyway. It doesn't always work and as I mentioned before sometimes you have to scale right down in order to get bites. On quiet days like this one, you normally have time to bait up the spare rigs. At other times, though, you just don't get a chance to do that. Another thing that works is not to wind straight in after missing a bite. Quite often they will follow and have another go at the bait. You have to be pretty fast so holding on to your rod and reel helps. This is why a lot of the time I'm not fishing with two rods. A 
another missed bite, and the bait on the top snood has gone. I'm still fishing at distance, although normally by this time the fish should be much closer in and a lob of say 30 yards is all you really need. The tide has now started to ebb so I swap over to the 14 foot estuary rod. I'm now casting about 40 yards and bites pick up. And the scoolies start getting slightly bigger. The sun comes out and I catch the smallest fish I've ever had from this stretch. I've no idea how it got that big hook in its mouth. I'm guessing it's a common goby but if you know any different please comment below. A couple of schoolies follow, but with an hour down, it's time to swap over back to the long rod and fishing at distance. My phone says my three hours parking time is almost up. And with the sun going back in and the weed coming out, it's time to go. Not a great session, seven scaldy bass landed and that mini species. However, not too bad given it's only three hours of fishing time. My second day at the same spot was again in order to use up leftover bait. This time it was a much bigger tide and I'm expecting to fish it down. Once again I'm only here for three hours it's right on high tide and with the tide being much bigger than last time as you can see there's not much beach left. I'm experimenting with rigs today. This one has got slightly shorter snud lengths um, but with size 10 hooks that's for fishing with the estuary rod. On my other rod I'm going to be using clip down versions of the rigs I used last time. Being a bigger tide, I'm expecting more of a pull with the ebb than last time, so I've selected these stiffer 
of the three tips that come with this rod. There's a lot more weed around because we've had a couple of storms before this session and I'm hoping it's not going to be too much of a problem. On a big spring tide the water comes up to the wall even at this spot and there have been quite a number of plans put forward in order to try and prevent flooding in the area. Fortunately the £35 million scheme to build a seven foot wall has been shelved and instead of that beach replenishment and raising the wall by 10 inches to 12 inches has been put forward. I want to make the most of the top of this tide so out goes the estuary rod. Again I'm chucking it about 40 yards the sort of distance that I caught last time. Because of a bigger tide I brought a longer rod to cast to the boats. So this time I'm setting up a 16 foot Daiwa Grand Wave. Again this is one of my favourite rods. I'm keeping a close eye on the estuary rod since I expect bites straight away. With a confined area that I'm in and with people walking behind me it's not likely that I'm going to use the long rod until further down the tide. The Pen Affinity 7000s are a perfect match for this rod. Still no movement on the estuary rod. Since I don't think the fish are close in, I make an early change and go for the 16 foot rod. So I'm wading in in order to cast out. And due to floating weed, I'm keeping the rod tip slightly higher up than last time. The estuary rod is rebaited, ready for when I think the fish have moved closer in. The wind has picked up and I get my first indication of a bite at distance. But all I bring in is weed. The tide is now ebbing, so I'm casting slightly upstream, which is to my right. And I get a bite, just as I'm putting the rod down.
there's no surprise that it's a schoolie. Next cast, a 30 yard lob. And I'm trying my other technique for hitting bites, i.e. standing up, holding the rod and hitting at everything. This approach seems to be working today. Not all bites are hit though, and the weed starts to become a problem. Half an hour down, and the tide is running quite fast and I get a lump on it's another personal best for this stretch I fished another two hours down and caught eight more schoolies, mainly to the estuary rod. <laughs> 